Valcha, hello and welcome to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. What we're going to do in this video is a little tutorial for you on how to taste whiskey. Now I'm not going to tell you how to drink whiskey. How you drink your whiskey is entirely up to you. How I drink my whiskey is up to me. So this is all about how to get the best out of tasting a whiskey. Once you've tasted it, once you've decided what you do or don't like, drink it how you like. Find a whiskey you like, find a way that you like to drink it, and then enjoy it. Responsibly, obviously, but enjoy it. So, how to taste whiskey. There's a little bit of a preamble. Uh, I would recommend if you're tasting whiskey, especially if you're tasting multiple whiskies, maybe you do a distillery tour, and at the end they might give you three whiskies to try. Take notes, have a little notepad. You might have an app on your phone, there's lots available these days. Take notes. Um, another thing to remember when you are tasting whiskey is there are no correct answers. If somebody says to you, that is a good whiskey, or ah, that's a terrible whiskey, what they really mean is they like that whiskey or they don't like that whiskey. You might like it, they might like it, you might not like it, who, who knows? How to find out if it's a good whiskey or not Put it in your mouth, taste it, if you like it it's a good one, if you don't like it there's plenty more to try. So there are no correct answers, you can be ballpark, you can get hints off people, you can get advice, but the best way is to decide for yourself. So I'm going to help you to work out how to decide for yourself, give you some pointers as on how to taste whiskey, how to get the best out of a whiskey tasting. So take some notes, always helps. Helps you to remember another time if you're maybe in a shop you see a bottle oh there's that one and I've tasted that but I can't remember what it was I had another three after it so take notes easy easy to refer back to okay now the first thing to do if you are tasting whiskey is to have a whiskey glass handy now this one here comes courtesy I'm not sure if you can make out the logo from Kilhoman a distillery on the island of Isla. A lot of distilleries now and whiskey tours they'll give you a little lanyard to hang around your neck and uh, this one's got quite a handy little uh, clip so boom there we go always be to get this off as well okay okay so we've got our glass now whiskey tasting glasses and uh, there are different types you can get this is a Glen Cairn glass a little sort of bulb shape like a little tulip bulb the flower tulip and this tends to um, arrow and direct the, the nose and the flavours up in the direction where it should be. They're not being released. They're normally sort of whiskey glass that you might get for a whiskey and coke with maybe some ice. Uh, classic sort of whiskey tumbler. Um, not as concentrated for, for tasting. So these shapes, you sometimes get little um, stem glasses. You'll often see master blenders, uh, proper tasters but, uh, will use. But for me, I quite like this little Glen Cairn glass. Now, for no good reason other than I'm a bit of a, an Isla whiskey fan myself, I'm going to use a little Kalila 12 year old. You can use whatever whiskey you like. This is purely for illustrative purposes. I'm not actually reviewing this whiskey today, but uh, it's always good to have some whiskey. To have some whiskey handy. So, a little whiskey for me as we go. I'll do a review, the Kalia, a tasting review of the Kalia 12 another time. Um, okay, now the first thing when you are tasting whiskey, before you even get there, have a look at it. Not just your nose, not just your mouth, but use your eyes. And you're looking at the colour of the whiskey. Now, general rules, and there are always exceptions to the rules. <coughs> the general rules are the darker the whiskey, the older it is. The longer it's been in a whiskey cask maturing, the, the more colour it gains, the darker it becomes. So if you look at it, this is a, you can see on the bottle, the number 12, a 12 year old. So I would say a sort of medium colour. Um, it's not too light, it's not too dark. Um, a nice sort of amber, a light amber colour in this one. A little uh, Aside to that is that you get a lot of whiskey matured in sherry casks, sometimes in port casks, and obviously those are quite deep dark red coloured drinks, and therefore if it has been matured in a port or a sherry cask, the whiskey will be darker. So a 12 year old matured in say bourbon casks, 
um, might be light amber a 12 year old matured in sherry cask would have a darker color it might look older but that's what uh, what to look out for so as a general rule the darker the older that's the first thing to do now you'll also hear about the legs in a whiskey so if you give it a little roll around the glass and I'm doing a very good job here don't want to spill any obviously that coats the side of the glass and the, as the whiskey starts to drip back down into the the rest of the liquid I suppose down the sides of the glass you get what are called legs little sort of long drops long drips back down in now the quicker that the the legs form maybe the longer the thinner they are the, the lighter the whiskey tends to be if it takes longer for the legs to to start to form and there may be uh, larger sort of wider drips then the whiskey will be a little bit heavier in your mouth so use your eyes first of all have a look see the color work it out um, maybe the age and another little aside to that is that some distillers do use artificial coloring so it might look quite dark but it may actually be quite young it doesn't really help you much but it's just something to be aware of i think it's e150 it's a caramel coloring so some distillers will put that in and that's but you could say for consistency of color but it's also just to give the impression maybe that the whiskey's a little bit older than it actually is so use your eyes look at the color look at the legs on your whiskey now for the actual tasting I like to say there's three steps the first step is on the nose so I have a little sniff of the whiskey we have more sensory receptors in our noses than we do in our mouths uh, master blenders the people who blend whiskey and they get as many as so I think I've heard some master blenders will get as many as about 70 different flavor notes in a single whiskey and they do it mostly if not solely on the nose so the nose is very important so before you drink it before you do anything to it on the nose that's step one step two is then obviously to drink the whiskey and for tasting purposes we drink it neat as it is as it comes out the bottle don't add anything to it so on the nose step one in the mouth step two step three is to add a little bit of water now we are blessed in Scotland we get a lot of water it rains quite often um, but we have a really good quality water in general quite soft water so I'm going to add a little bit of water and what we say when you add water it tends to open up the whiskey it opens it out it gives you a little bit more flavor so on the nose in the mouth neat and then have a little taste with some water so that's the the three steps to tasting whiskey now you can become as uh, flowery as you like with your language where i've been things i've tasted my my experiences my vocabulary all obviously unique to me same with you especially if we come from different countries then our experiences will com be completely different so uh, what i taste what i smell might be completely different from the way that you describe what you smell and what you taste remember there are no correct answers so have a smell of your whiskey and concentrate now you may get one or two things you might think oh well you're going to smell the alcohol the strength <laughs> Kelly, that's lovely so um the, the, the general sort of signposts this coming from isla isla whiskies are quite smoky and peaty so i get a little bit of smoke there and peat is quite an earthy smell if you smell turf um been digging the garden something like that that earthiness you can get you might get sort of bonfire smoke uh, one of my favorite tasting notes that i ever saw was i think it was a lafroy one of the notorious isla whiskies and it had a note of burning tire so i don't know why you'd promote a product that tasted or smelled of burning tire but there you go so you might get sort of the more hospital smells you might get sort of um, the tcp that sort of thing um other taste notes you might get the the, the wood the oak from the barrels you get with that you get your toffee you get your caramel you get butterscotch treacle you'll get um the bourbon or the sherry whatever the barrel has been used for previously 
you get things like citrus fruit, so obviously things like oranges, lemons, and with that comes your more sort of Christmas cakes or your spiced fruits, things like maybe raisins or um, I don't know, dates or figs. So all these things, um, you might get green apple, I think it's the Royal Loch Nagar Distillery, their standard age statement, got a real sort of burst of green apple to it. You might get freshly cut grass, you might get hay. All these things, as I say, these are my sort of experiences, uh, the vocabulary I use. You may have different experiences, different vocabulary. So smell your whiskey and see what you get. You might get one or two flavour notes, you might get six or seven. You might surprise yourself with what you get. Now in this, as I say, I get a bit of smoke, not too too, too much. Um, you get quite a sort of creamy vanilla as well, when uh, or I do anyway, from the, the Kalila. You also get a little bit of a sort of sea air. Um, Kalila is right on the shore. So you've got that sort of uh, maritime feel to things as well. So have a smell and there you go. That's what, four, five, six things just in a, a, a short a short little sniff. So have a smell of your whiskey. The nose, as I say, very important. The next thing, finally, you're going to take a little taste of the whiskey. Now remember, tasting purposes, don't add anything have the first taste completely neat. It's alcohol, it's quite strong, it's going to be over 40%. This particular one is 43%. So your mouth, as soon as it sort of hits the first time, it's going to react a little bit. Um, after two or three sips, your mouth adjusts quite quickly. So have a little sip. You're not downing it, you're not necking it, it's not, you're not on a stag weekend or a uh, bachelor party, anything like that. You're not lining up shots in the bar, you've got plenty of other spirits for that. Uh, whiskey, especially single malt whiskey, is for nurturing and caressing and enjoying slowly. So when we're drinking single malt, we take our time with it. So a little sip for the tasting. Now again for tasting, get it swirled round. Maybe not full on mouthwash style, but certainly. Now, as well as the flavour notes, you'll get a feel when you put it in your mouth. Sometimes whiskies they'll come from the top down, they'll come from the back of your mouth forward, they'll disappear, they'll, they'll hang about. You get a real sensation when you're drinking whisky. So try and try to remember that. One of the greatest whiskies I ever tried was from Bruchladi over in Isla, the, the Black Art. And the best way I could describe it, irrespective of flavour notes, is it just kept doing things. Um, I didn't know what it was when I tried it. I got given one. Super generous. It's around about £30 a nip. Um, so obviously quite enjoyed that. But um, it just kept doing stuff. It, it's like, oh, this is smoky. This is really nice. Oh, oh. And then it disappeared and oh, oh, it didn't last very long. And then it sort of came down from the top. It reappeared and sort of spread down through my mouth. And it just kept almost like reverberating around my mouth. So be aware that your whiskey could, could be quite light, could disappear. It could be quite thick. It could hang about. It can maybe you only taste it at the side of your mouth. It might come straight at you, hit you on the nose. Who knows? So be aware of that. Now, also when you taste it and put it in your mouth, compare the taste really is some people will say that your mouth is confirming what your nose has already done so those flavor notes that you got in the first place do you get the same now i usually find something a little bit different it's not always the same on the nose as it is in the mouth but um from whatever you've decided whatever you've noted down on the nose see if you get the same in your mouth now i got a lot more wood in the mouth than I did on the nose in the Kalila. Um, otherwise quite similar it's maybe a little bit more sort of charred smoke rather than that um, the malty smoke that I would have got in the nose the creamier sort of more cereal smoke almost if that makes sense so a bit more charred and uh, a bit woodier in the mouth not as not as gentle and delicate as it was in the nose so it's slightly different but clearly much the same um, and that burns away now as well, so for the, the heat of the initial taste. So we've done it on the nose, we have tried it neat. The next way, remember for tasting, the third step is just add a little bit of water. We don't really know 
exactly what water does. We tend to say it opens it out. So it tends to break down some of the chemical combinations in there. It releases some flavour. Uh, if you've been maturing whisky for years, a lot of that flavour is sort of locked in. And when you add the water, um, it releases a lot of the oils and the flavours that are locked into the whisky. The strength of the whisky, the age of the whisky can depend how much water you put in. So as a general tasting sort of slide, um, sort of standard rule, what I'll say is add two or three drops of water. So a real minimal amount of water. And it's always it always pays to make sure you don't add too much water because you can't really take it out again. <clears throat> now I used to say that, that used to be my standard spiel. And then I met one of these once in a lifetime geniuses and he said no 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 Keith always add too much water because then you've got to add loads more whiskey to get the balance right again so depends how much whiskey you want to drink depends how you look at it but either way there you go so for this demonstration I'm going to add my two or three drops of water that's a big drop There we go, there's, I'd say that's maybe three and a half. Now, I didn't do it there, but when you drop the water in, you can actually, if you, if you watch it from the top, sometimes in a distillery tasting, they'll give you a pipette, so you can actually drop the water in, and you can see when you drop the water in, it almost, it's like sort of concentric circles out the way, you can see the water, and the, almost like the oiliness of the whiskey uh, starting to intermingle, starting to interact. So give it a good swirl and then have another little taste. Now, the more water that you add, the more heat you'll take off the whiskey. When I first started drinking whiskey, um, if I had, say, a finger of whiskey, I would add about half again of water. I'd really like to take the heat off. But the more water you add, generally, the more flavour you lose. You're diluting it, simple as that. So if you add two or three drops of water, that will open out the flavour. Sometimes it can make very little difference. Sometimes it will make... Uh, an appreciable difference. Now I would say it's now a little bit sharper on the nose than it was before. And there is certainly more more oomph, more hit in my mouth. It's more, as I was talking about, it's now at the top of my mouth, around the top of my mouth. I can feel that a lot more. So, Hopefully you can see straight away, I'm starting to feel slightly different things, taste slightly different things, just with that tiny little bit of water. Now if you want, you can add more water, see what difference it makes, if it's still a bit hot. Remember, it's, it's however you like it. Now, we're drinking single malt here. I'm all about single malt Scottish whisky. Um, you'll often hear about people talking about uh, adding other things, not just two or three drops of water, add in things like uh, Coca-Cola. Keith, is it okay to add Coca-Cola to my whiskey? Well, a few years ago, two or three years ago, I was on the Isle of Skye, I was in Portree, there's a really good whiskey bar in Portree called the Merchant Bar. There was a guy, barman in there, Big Dave, big guy from Ayrshire in Scotland. The sky is up here, and Big Dave came from down the west of Scotland and he said Keith this guy came in with his girlfriend and he said what's your most expensive whiskey and Dave said it's the, it's the Macallan 18 and the guy said can I get a double please and a can of coke and Dave said I'm not putting coke in that so in Dave's opinion you don't put coke in single malt whiskey. The, the, the argument is that you've got this beautiful spirit it's been maturing for years and years, 12 years, 18 years, however long, in the barrel, in the warehouse. All that expertise, all that patience has gone into giving it such a unique, balanced flavour. And if you pour half a can of coke in, you're going to taste coke. So if you want whiskey and coke, fine, put it in a, a blend, an average blend have your whiskey and coke, but really it's wasted in a single malt. So for single malt, we highly recommend you don't add coke. Another one is ice, scotch on the rocks. Should you add ice? 
Now the argument is a quite similar argument against putting ice into a single malt. If you add ice, you're going to cool it right down and you're going to lock in a lot of the flavour. So again, all those flavours, all that, all those nuances, all that complexity that's built up over the years, you put ice in it, you're going to shut some of that down. You're not going to get the full benefit. So if you want, if you're, I don't know, if you're California, Australia, somewhere hot, I understand you might need to put some ice in. In Scotland, at room temperature, there's no real need for ice in your whiskey. And then obviously once the eggs melts, it starts to dilute and there's a lot of water added to your whiskey. And again, you're not going to get that full, um, the full flavour maximum hit. So those are the arguments against ice, against coke. You will offend some people, you'll offend Big Dave, but my advice is for tasting, do what I've said, look at it, look at the legs, on the nose, drink it neat, and then add a little bit of water. Bottom line, find a whiskey that you like, find a way that you like to drink it. If you want to add coke, if you want to add coke and ice, if you like it, as long as you're buying whiskey, as long as you're drinking whiskey, then that's the main thing. Um, if you want to add, I don't know, mango juice and a cherry and a little cocktail umbrella, if that's what you like, don't listen to me, don't listen to other people. Find a whiskey that you like, find a way that you like to drink it and enjoy it. So hopefully that's a little help for you. How to taste whiskey, how you drink it is up to you, but how to taste it, how to get the best out of tasting, that's the way that I would recommend. Um, so, check out any other videos if you like this one that I've got. I do some tastings, I do little tutorials here and there, and I do a little bit about uh, my, my day job as well, I'm a tour guide in Scotland. So check me out, subscribe to my channel, but as always at the end, I'll give you a little toast. So, Slanjava. Cheers.